Hi everyone, James here from Linode. I'm here at IT Nation in Orlando. I've been joined by Val King of White Hat Virtual Technologies, CEO. Val, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, this is part of our MSP Spotlight, so we're just looking to find out a little bit more about your business, uh, perhaps just uh, lift the hood and uh, see, see what it is you do and who, who you target. So perhaps, uh, can I have a quick introduction about who you are and uh, the nature of your business, what you do? Sure. Uh, my name is Val King, thank you very much, uh, and we run a managed services provider out of Austin, Texas, uh, take care of several thousand customers kind of around the globe for U.S. companies and their subsidiaries. Business is really broken down into managed virtual desktops, full managed services, cloud hosting, uh, and colo, uh, as well as uh, some of our own products we've developed uh, for the industries that we serve. Fantastic. And so there, are there any specific customers that you go after at the moment? Do you have a specific target, your, your ideal customer, or is it a, is it a, is it a mix? Uh, that's very interesting. So for us, we began in the healthcare and financial services space uh, because there was a regulatory component to it. Again, doing a lot of virtual desktop infrastructure, uh, that's where a lot of that infrastructure exists, or they have a need from a regulatory or compliance standpoint. And a mm -hmm. lot of our offerings really uh, grew out of that. But then if you look at that, really manufacturing, retail, uh, legal, um, insurance, um, those are other industries that have, have we've kind of expanded into. And then most recently, architecture, engineering, and construction has been a, a big part of this with COVID and everybody trying to figure out how to work from somewhere else or try to hire from someplace else and still give them a good PC-like experience. So, so obviously COVID has been quite a kind of, uh, certainly it's seen your business model change, I imagine, evolve. Specifically, has it, it helped or hindered? I would say it's helped us a lot. We have ourselves always been remote. Uh, so we found ourselves in a place with uh, desktop virtualization or cloud desktops, desktops as a service, already having, you know, I guess 96 is when I was first exposed to the technology. So we've been doing this a very long time. So when a lot of companies tried to figure out how to do work from home, we were already there. So uh, it's been, it, it really didn't change our business model. If anything, it, it forced a 25% growth in our company while we helped companies figure out how to take their bubble gum and bottle cap solutions that they were doing and turn it into something more permanent so they could take care of the staff they had. And then really it turned into a retention thing in terms of recruiting, either maintaining staff or giving them a wider pool to recruit from. Uh, became much more interesting uh, from that standpoint because you didn't have to recruit from within 45 miles of your office. You could recruit from anywhere and connect them. So anyway, it's, it's really evolved into something more interesting and a much deeper conversation about how people work and what employees value and how to find and retain really good talent, which is a long, long way away from just delivering managed IT services. Yeah, it, it, it is definitely. However, it's a common theme, right? In the managed service space, you know, recruiting and attracting the right talent is a real challenge. So being able to offer you know, a wider pool to choose from is definitely definitely a bonus. So a large part of your business then is around the VDI solutions. So is this, so this is centrally hosted applications that are accessed from uh, like a, a thin client or something, like, something along those lines? Uh, yes, from an endpoint perspective, it could be a, a Windows endpoint, it could be a Linux endpoint thin client. Mm -hmm. um, and then that is coming back to a centralized server or set of servers somewhere, be that on-prem with the customer, be that colo, be that cloud, public cloud, or be that in our own infrastructure. Or, and then we've developed um, with Dell and VMware, uh, we OEM some VDI in a box appliances with Citrix and VMware. So if they want VDI, but don't, under, don't really have the expertise to understand it, or honestly want to pay the $130,000 according to Indeed, to staff a really good guy for it, they have a way to get the technology, hang it in their own data center okay. uh, yeah. as a good middle ground if they're not ready for cloud mm -hmm. for whatever reason. So we've, we try to cover all bases. If you need the technology, we've got a way to get it to you in a way that makes sense for your business instead of trying to jam a square peg into a round hole. You know, I'm not, I'm not a hammer and everything's a nail. And, and so the kind of customers you work with then, am I to take it these are probably the larger ones, is that right? Or is it SMBs as well? Is there a kind of a staff size that you kind of pinpoint as being the ideal fit for this? Or I suppose it varies depending on how they want that implementation done, doesn't it? It really, it really varies by what's going to make sense for them. Our average customer is two to 300 seats in size. Okay. Uh, but for the smaller customers, the conversation is really, 
Why do you want to own stuff? I mean, there's always more hungry birds in the nest for your business than there are dollars to feed them. So why do you want to spend it owning infrastructure for those guys? Let's give you the expertise of somebody managing it and giving you stuff someplace else. Mm -hmm. And you just do what you do. For larger companies, it makes sense. They've got the investment. They've got the infrastructure that could be on-prem or that could be helping them figure out how to do cloud. But it really varies based on the size. But for us, a couple hundred seats, what, what's really going to vary is our recommendation in terms of should you own stuff, should you not own stuff, what makes sense for your business to preserve your capital to really help you get to what you wanted. You don't want a room full of computers. You want to drive and build your business at whatever gets you out of bed in the morning with the fire in your belly. We want to enable that and just support with technology instead of steal all your technology dollars and leave you in a place where you can't build what you got out of bed to do. I, re I really like that. And that ties in a little bit to something we were talking about earlier on with your, your approach to how you position this, how you frame that for customers. And I really like that. Can you give us a, give us an idea then of the analogy you use with the, with the pencil? I need to hear this again, Val. Sure. Um, <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's nice. Uh, f from our perspective, and I'll go back to that very same analogy, whenever somebody had a bright idea to open a business, they woke up wanting to bake bread, wanting to sell flowers, whatever it is they wanted to get out of bed and do. Nobody ever woke up and said, I want a room full of computers with blinky lights and wires and fans buzzing and extra cooling and little blue wires hanging out of the back of them. Some might. <laughs> well, okay. They're in the minority. I don't, I, I've, I've searched here. I haven't found one yet. So, and that's really been our approach is... Um, if you look at IT, if you look at our space, when we were founded, it was founded on the level of frustration and of the poor quality customers were getting really out of desktop virtualization. That's really one of the places we began um, because it was all about what IT wanted and, and the infrastructure. It wasn't about the whole point you own this stuff is to make end users more productive. We all run on blood. We all run on the people it takes to drive our companies. But we were delivering technology to them that did not take them into account. It made sense financially, it was pretty, it had the right blinky lights, it hung in the data center, but when we got to the last 18 inches between the screen and the eyeballs, it was a bad experience. Mm -hmm. So we're, I mean, I might as well hand them, you know, what do we do? We spend roughly $2,200 a year, according to, to Gartner, uh, providing um, support for end users. So give them a $1,000 PC, $2,200 a year in labor, with a set of applications that we think makes them more productive. Well, if I'm not going to, if I don't care about that last 18 inches, I might as well hand them a big chief notepad and a number two pencil for a dollar thirty-four. Yeah. Right. What's the point? So backing that up to the pencil, and as we, what we talked about earlier, um, I look at um, IT and service providers in general in terms of how we deliver uh, our capability. Um, Looking back at what today is high technology, what was high technology 108 years ago, which was a pencil with an eraser. Uh, and if you, if you draw the parallel to what that means today, from my perspective, I'm interested in looking at what is that experience like between the screen and the eyeballs of the human. Yep. If we translate that to a pencil, that is the lead. Uh, while it takes 14 years to make a pencil, by the time you grow the cedar tree, carve it into a block, cut it up, put five slots in it, slap down glue, slap down lead, make a pencil sandwich, carve it up into five pencils, paint it for rule it, shape it, paint it, stamp it, sharpen it, package it, ship it, 14 years. Okay, but if I give you that pencil and reflect back to your six-year-old self when you're sitting in class for the first time trying to print your name and you put that pencil to paper and the lead snaps, what is the value of your 106-year-old productivity tool? Nothing. Mm -hmm. You've got a Harry Potter stick, right? Mm -hmm. Woohoo! Yay! All right. Yeah. Yeah. So no productivity. And I look at IT the same way. A lot of our, a lot of the IT organizations are focused on IT, and it's not about the, again the stick, the servers, the switches, the infrastructure. That is a that is a method to the madness. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. that is the sushi delivering the wasabi, yeah. or the chip delivering the hot sauce. The point is yeah. the lead. And if if I can't be productive then I don't want to play. Anyway, that's it's, it's a, a long version to say that's where White Hat is focused, is on making sure the end user is the most productive possible because that is the reason the companies are formed, that's why all this infrastructure exists, and that's really what we're trying to do is help the owners of those companies deliver the outcome they want. I mean, IT infrastructure is a method to deliver the outcome, so we want our customers to be able to deliver 
We want, we want to sell them the outcome mm -hmm. and then figure out what parts and pieces we need to glue together behind the scenes to make that a reality. They don't care. They just want the outcome. And I, and I think that's so important because it's the mistake that so many businesses make. Some of the MSPs that struggle, it's because they're focusing on the wrong thing. So really interesting. That's definitely, definitely a point worth, worth making. Um, so on that note, seeing as we've been talking about how the technology isn't important, let's talk about technology. <laughs> so just brief, it's going to be big. just going briefly, to be big. yeah. <laughs> um, so obviously your your focus is around, or you, you you work with both Linux and Windows, but Linux features heavily in some of the work you do. Correct. Can you just give the audience, perhaps those who don't work with Linux, kind of why that is, some of the things it allows you to do, or why you choose that platform? Sure. Uh, Linux for us is really based around uh, what our customers are trying to accomplish. So for our media and entertainment. Uh, industry customers, they have custom workflows around um, models they're building or workflows they're driving mm -hmm. that are built on the back of Linux or energy companies also by the same token, a lot of their applications are driven by Linux. Mm -hmm. So for us, now we've always used Linux on the, on the edge uh, from a thin client standpoint, it's made a ton of sense, very small attack vector and a very simplistic way low cost, high capability device to bring you back into the infrastructure to deliver a PC-like experience. Um, but really it's, it's driven by the workflows of the industries that we support. And then virtual desktops also happen to be available on, on a Linux platform. So for those customers, look, it, it, it's, it comes back to very simply, what do you need to run your business? Mm -hmm. And if Linux makes the most sense, then I want to be in a position to offer Linux to help you drive the business forward. I don't want to come to you and say, I know Linux is probably better for you, but I got this super cool Windows platform for you. Because it's what we do, and right. that's what we're used exactly. to. Exactly. Yeah. It's The point is to make your business better. Mm -hmm. The point is not to give you something I'm the most comfortable with. If I'm not comfortable with it, then really, I need to evaluate, are you the right customer for me, or my better serve saying, hey, here's a great provider that already does the things you need, let me get you to them so they can take care of you, mm -hmm. instead of asking you to bend your dream, your business, your blood, sweat, and tears, your risk around what I'm doing as a company. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to support you, you're not supposed to support me. Just help me make payroll on Friday, that's all. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, ultimately it's about best fit, isn't it? That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. that's it. And so in terms of the platforms you use then, so you mentioned you've got a number of different deployment methods and you do what the customer needs ultimately. Um, obviously, I'm talking to you from Linode, so I'm interested in the cloud side of things. Um, so which providers do you use and do you find that are they always the right fit? A bit of a leading question here, but <laughs> obviously, but it, it, what works in what scenarios? Sure. Uh, so for us today, it's uh, largely Azure and AWS are the environments that we play with and uh, really driven on the back of uh, the workloads that our customers are doing and integrating into what they've already got and then uh, virtual desktops and then needing GPU. You know, if I'm going to deliver a virtual desktop that is going to deliver a PC-like experience, I can't buy a laptop that doesn't have a graphics card in it of some sort. Yeah. So, but we still see a lot of environments that are delivering virtual desktops without graphics cards because somehow the law of physics, the laws of physics don't apply <laughs> uh, to virtual desktops. Yeah. But if I want to deliver a PC-like experience, then I need to equip the virtual desktop with the same capability as the laptop, or it's always going to be a crappy experience at the expense of the end user. Mm -hmm. So those clouds allow us the best opportunity to deliver public cloud solutions, but we have to be all over the board. In some cases, public cloud makes sense, uh, but, you know, we're having a conversation with you because I need Linux and Linux is not always the easiest to get out of the cloud. And in some cases I need to be in a colo. In some cases I need to be on-prem. Really it's about where's the best place for compute to live for you as a customer. Um, and again, if they've got Linux, sometimes the public cloud solution is great and sometimes the public solution is leaves a little to be desired. And so that's what really what I'm here for is for finding solutions for customers and making sure we've got all the right arrows in our bag. So wherever our customer needs to shift to, we are either in a position to take that shift or we're in a position to help them find somebody to make that shift with. Excellent. No, that definitely that explains it beautifully. So, um, so listen, Val, it's been wonderful chatting to you. I think we should wrap up. We're obviously, we're in the, we're, this is a bit of a run and gun interview. We're in the uh, IT Nation re sort of restaurant area, aren't we? So uh, any minute now, I think probably the entire MSP community is going to descend upon us. So um, I'd love to carry on chatting to you some more, perhaps another time. But thank you so much for joining me. Um, sure. Is there anything you'd like to say? So obviously, uh, our audience consists of other MSPs and uh, developers across 
all sorts of different sizes of businesses. Anything you'd like to say about your company or how people can get in touch with you if sure. you've got anything, uh, if you've got any questions around this? Yes, uh, White Hat Virtual Technologies, located in Austin, Texas. Uh, if you're trying to grow your MSP, um, be happy to help and offer you know free advice that we can. And now understand it's worth what you paid for it, but to be happy to try to help <laughs> some of those guys figure it out. And you know we're here also uh, trying to help customers build virtual desktop or work from home strategies. So other partners, we provide those services, and we also build a um, a compliance portal effectively to help MSPs get a handle on managing everything from cybersecurity insurance forms all the way to frameworks of controls, and then to extend those services to their customers. So coming from a regulated space, former CIO of a healthcare system, CIO of a bank. Um, I get it, and so we've spent five years building that. We've delivered it to our customers, and so it's some of the conversations we're having here is helping other MSPs figure out how to bolt one or both of those services onto their practice so they can keep the devils at the door, uh, keep them out, and then uh, drive an additional revenue line off of something that mm -hmm. their customers ask for and need that mm, many of them don't have a solution for today but I'll put a sock in it. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. I mean, that's a, a, that, is a, that is one we could do a separate interview on, that that need for, I mean, it's another theme, the cybersecurity, the frameworks that MSPs need to follow. We talked to CompTIA actually just recently at the Acronis event about something similar, and it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, any advice you can give on that framework for MSPs to follow to make their lives easier is, it would definitely be valuable. So thank you for the offer there. And uh, yeah, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. I really enjoyed the chat at the booth and, and here. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I, I really appreciate the time today. Lovely. All the best. Take care.